greetings and salutations from yours, your lady of the room, Evelina Mama, lady of yours and my realm. And I have watched, just watched the best movie I have ever seen. And that came out of my childhood. And I'll let you know, one, does it have a unicorn in it? Yeah. The last unicorn. Yep. As you see, it's another one of those uh, DVDs that I rented from the library. Yeah, I'm not, I'm one of those people who wouldn't give and video stores their money that they deserved, and, and I, I like video stores, but God knows they're expensive, Hastings up there. Also, I would like it to say, well, let's just start off with the plot. Basically, for those who haven't seen it, the plot is about a unicorn that finds out she's the only unicorn. And unless and as she finds out it's from like a talking butterfly that saw these saw all the unicorns be swept away by a gigantic red bull. Yeah, not like the energy drink, my friends. You know, I'm sure hey, those uh unicorns. Cause yeah, you would probably see wings on those unicorns as they were pushed into the ocean. But anyways, yes, I. So basically. <laughs> this is not much of a name for the unicorn other than, you know, UNICORN! But, you know, she gets one towards the end, so I don't, I don't want to spoil too much, but I believe she was probably voiced by Angela Lansbury. Well, no, no, not her, I guess. Sorry. Let me see. Sorry, I'm totally laming up this whole thing. I don't mean to. But, this was a movie made back in, like, 1982, and it, okay, well, anyways, back to what I was talking about, the plot, anyways, the plot goes on to have about, uh, the unicorn beyond the journey, sorry. That means free turkey, guys, come on over. Here's your call. Yeah, what are you doing for the holiday this year? I am hosting the whole family. There we go. So, commercials. What are you gonna do? Anyways, it's, it's based off a book by Peter S. Beagle, and like I said, the unicorn goes off to discover, try to find the last unicorn. So she won't be the last unicorn anymore. Wow. Anyways, um, the as she goes on this journey, she runs into a magician at a really, really badly run carnival. Now, it's basically where they have animals, and this witch basically has enchanted them to look like monsters, such as, okay, a lion that was supposed to be a manticore, a sick lion, you know, it looks like some people a manticore. And, let's see. Uh, another enchantment is uh, one with a very sick, lame monkey. I can't remember what the monkey was supposed to be. It's been a while, so. Um, but, there was one thing at that was there that was not made up. And it was this giant harpy that tries to that um comes and 
kills the witch when uh, the unicorn and the magician is free. And made a very interesting statement that still sticks with me. That's like, you never run away from magical beings. It only angers them. I was thinking about that, and I'm thinking, no, what it does is we get away faster. That's what happens. But, hey. Uh, next thing, thing on the list is they run to a woman by the name of Molly. Yeah, not that kind of Molly. Uh, Molly, who is with these, uh, old men, really, and living in a forest and such, and... I think she's one of the few people who actually recognizes her as a unicorn. And, and says, Where were you when I was pure and young? Da, da, da. Yeah, that, that part's going to come up. So for those people who are not really, that really, okay, awkward animation there. You're going to get it. Don't worry. Okay. The 80s didn't disappoint. Let's see. Next part would have been my part. And this part makes me really question my sexuality at times. Because even I was intrigued by it. Basically, I guess out of meanness or and or cruelty to oh wait, I'm sorry, that comes before Okay. I'm not going to spoil it, because if I can't remember where the place let's just put it this way. They tie the wizard to a tree, and I think Alphamea, or that's her name, and basically uses her unicorn powers to bring the tree to life. And the tree turns out to be a woman, and, you know, your house that has a... Um, you have those really portly looking trees, like, yeah, the tree is very portly around, and what happens to it is you get, like, this big, sexy bust around it. And there's your fan service for this video. But anyways, as I was watching this video, I was... Watching that part, I was thinking, how is this in a kid's film? I know it's the 80s, and they love to really push that uh, G or PG thing, but I can't remember. Um, you're going to be astounded by this, but you see that, that, little, that little G right there? The little yeah. Read it cheap. General audiences. Big breast, a tree, and it's ready cheap. I'm sure I've seen other really weird crud, but come on, 80s, are you serious? But that's besides the point. Um. <sighs> you know, do the film. Sorry, I'm really tired of. Let's see, five hours, and I'm pushing it now, so. But, I enjoyed that moment, because, like I say, the tree was pretty much, like, I love you always, it's for eternity, there's no love more, more wonderful, or enduring as a tree. And I'm thinking, uh, 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 ugh. Didn't know what to think. Can I say you? I don't get it. I don't ever understand that part, but or how they got into a kids' film. But it was there. It was still there. It's still there now. It's still G for some reason. 
But anyways, we go on, and then, uh, there was, like, a part where the wizard brought to life these little, these little, brought to life, uh, fantasy characters like Robin Hood and Mariam and, and Maid Marian and the, the Merry Men of Sherwood Forest. And, you know, they're kind of like ghosts or something. You, they just kind of walk through that field. This would be great for anyone who has read books like The Sword and the Stone. That's still my favorite book. However, it's one of my favorite parts in that film, too. Uh, next part to this film huh? would be finally, finally, they run into the Red Bull. Huh? And the Red Bull, huh? you know, takes a charge at Alpha Man, and that's the name they give her when she changes into a person after running into the bull. They sneak her past the guards. Huh? The wizard had to change her into that because, you know, maybe he, if the world didn't think that that was a unicorn, he would just go away. But she did, it worked. Okay. But, you know, she goes on to say, But, I'm human. I'm human. I'm in a human body and I'm dead in this body. And there was that. I was like, Yeah, sorry, but then again, I think you'd still be dead if. The bull had, um, charged you into the ocean, you would not have say, um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. almost got one out of me, didn't you, Slugger? But, anyway. <sighs> but as the story goes on, right? Right? They run to a prince who, and his, uh, very, very crazy father who wanted to had seen a unicorn before and wanted to keep it, it though. And basically, they stay there until they finally find out where the unicorns are. But during this time period, you know, they have the whole concept of trying to find the love interest between Alpha Maya or the unicorn, slash unicorn. And the I don't know what was the other one? Oh yes, and the prince. You know, the prince tries to woo her by killing things like a dragon and bringing the head. Yeah, folks, this is what chivalry meant back then. Bring me something dead, and I shall be happy with it. I yeah, I don't understand it even. Moving on to the next part. Anyways, as the story progresses, finally, finally, the, the wizard learns that there is a way to find the unicorns. They're told some weird riddle or something that on the cat. Yeah, there's a talking cat. I tried not to question that part. Still weird today. Still was weird when I was a child. And it will never, ever, ever end. Okay? Still weird. But still like, well, let me explain why the cat can talk at all, but still. Well, they find this, and then they find, like, a, a skeleton sitting up on top of a clock, and they're supposed to guess the real from the skeleton. That's right. And here's the skeleton, you know, he... He's a weird skeleton, but I like it. He's sitting on top of that clock and everything, and I guess they give him something like what's supposedly alcohol. It's not real alcohol, but you know, as far as we know, it's just yeah, it's like an empty bottle. So he does he like to drink wine? I guess when he was alive or something. I don't know. Not questioning the 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 motives of a talking skeleton, okay? You do it, all right? You try to see this movie, but anyways, 
it's one of my favorite parts, but still. Uh, what's the next part of this film that I enjoyed? What was the next part? Oh, they finally, the unicorn gets found out, and the king, king you know, who had this obsession with unicorns, is not too happy about her getting away, and of course, the, you know, the, after they, the, uh, skeleton realizes it and tells him, and this is kind of where the dialogue is weird to me, because, I don't know, maybe it's whenever they show these people in the same place, and... Okay, it's, it just sometimes alludes me, okay? But... Towards the end of this film, they free the unicorns and everything, and... You know, the prince basically accepts that the unicorn has to go back to the forest, and... That, you know, loving her was by not, you know, forcing her to stay and being his life and all that stuff. If it's kind of a nice romantic tale that doesn't end in a happily ever after romance, get the idea. I can live with that. that that's a good ending to a story about a character that I barely want much to do with. No offense. Uh, but that's pretty much it. My personal thoughts on this film is... Personal thoughts on the film? It's a good film, but I feel like it's meant for older children now, considering, like, what I said about the tree with breast. Um, the people who played the voices for these characters were fantastic. In my opinion, I don't think they necessarily brought this. There was a great way to bring this to life or anything, but I didn't think it was that bad. But, um, okay. Here are the names of those characters. Uh, you got Molly Groom, who was the woman, and, and she's played by Tammy Grimes. Uh, they got Mia Farrow. Uh, Mia Farrow. Play, play the unicorn slash Alphamea. Uh, then you got Alan Arkin played Smendrick. Okay, and that's. And Jeff Bridges. You know, Jeff Bridges, I can't remember what else he's done, but. Oh. Oh, yeah, Don Nesman plays the calf voice. There you go. And just so your nightmares are fuller than they used to be. I see where I who uh, plays the tree's voice. Where you find it, that is. I have to look back at the story. Can I get the synopsis? Oh, yeah. Mommy Fortuna is played by Angela Mansbury. Sorry. And I know I said that at the beginning of this review. Oh, okay. Nelly Bellflower falls in love with him, or basically, poetry. Oof. Anyways, um, thanks for watching this video and putting it out with me, and I'm sorry that this is just a longer review than I actually expected it to be, but
Anyways, thanks for watching. Uh, click, click here to subscribe. There should be a little thing coming up. And follow links down below and tell me how I did. Follow me anywhere you can. Uh, I'm opening my Facebook since I don't think there's much to be afraid of anymore. Anyways, uh, but anyways, have a good night, ladies and gentlemen, and bye. What are you still doing here? Go on, chew. Eat it, man. Oh, it's alright. I still love you anyways.